First up, we've got 19-year-old Odissier from London on line one. Odissier, good morning. Oh, yeah, my Hi. hands. I've got some serious confidence problems, man. Right, you sound very confident. Well, no, I mean, uh, you know, I use it as a mask, and, uh, you know, I mean, I find it hard putting on clothes, going outside, eating food, you know. Uh, yeah, so, uh, do you have any advice? And how old are you? I'm 19, I am. 19? Yeah. Okay. General confidence? Well, yeah, that's... I can't eat noodles, I can't eat chopsticks. Okay. That sounds to me a little bit more than general confidence, because if he's not going out and he's got trouble eating food, he may have... <laughs> Aidan, what you may have, sweetheart, is... Oh, uh, God, you got me through my nature. Let's go... I think we get rid of that car. I can't work out what he's talking about there at all, I'm afraid. I think it was okay. a prankster. Uh, happy half term. Mm. Uh, who's up next, please, Colm? Okay, let's go to Sally from London on line two, then. Thanks very much, Sally. Morning. Hiya. Hiya. Hi there. What's up with you? Um, I'm confident. I'm a professional musician. Right. Um, and I'm generally quite a confident person in ordinary life, but quite often when I walk on stage, I'll, I'll get so, so nervous, I can't actually remember. Um, what my first note of the piece is, or how to hold my bow. I was, I have anxiety, so I'm going to drop my bow. I'm a cellist, so right. um, just quick um, advice about that, really. And and when you, I mean, th this is how it, you feel as you lead up to a performance. What about once you've actually sat down and started? Well, quite often I won't feel too bad before I walk on stage, and then I sit on stage and see the audience out there and just panic. <laughs> Basically. Well, I mean, this it sounds to me like the classics of stage fright. Mm -hmm, it's something yeah. I can remember experiencing going out and with school plays and things like that. Uh, any but, yeah, it's fine, I, don't, I don't have problems every time I go out and perform. Sometimes it, I feel absolutely great, fine, and other times I'll just go to pieces. Okay, okay. Sally, let me have a little chat with you about this, because what you're suffering from is, in fact, stage fright, and there's a yeah. good way to get over it. Okay. Before you go out on the stage, one of the things that you can do is to just take three or four very, very slow, very deep breaths. Yeah. And what I want you to do is what we call an anchoring technique. And an anchoring technique is, now if you don't wear a piece of jewelry all the time, then just use something like, you know, your little finger or something like that. But if you always wear a certain watch or a certain ring, it's great. And what I want you to do is, I want you to think of the time that you felt really most confident, most relaxed, calm, on top of it. You know, the best performance you've ever given? Yeah. That kind of thing. Really conjure that up in your mind. In, remember where you were. Remember how you felt inside. Remember how your body felt as well. It's a physical thing and an emotional thing. And what you do is you rub the ring that you've got. Yeah. And you're, it's what we call pairing. You're pairing a positive experience to an object. And so what you do is you do that two or three times. Now, you need to do that before you go on stage. And, you, and so that what happens is when you do get to that point, you're standing off stage, you do your deep breathing, you just close your eyes, you rub your ring, and you recall the positive feelings. Yeah. yeah. So that when you walk out on that stage, you see yourself in exactly the same way as you did on that fabulous performance that you've paired it with. Yeah. That's great. You make it sound very easy. No, you have to practice it. It's like going to the gym. You will build up your strength. So it's, it's like anything, Matthew. You know, with these exercises, you have to work at them. You can't just... I mean, wouldn't it be great? I mean, if I could just go once a year to the gym and be fit, I'd do it. Yeah, but wouldn't, you, wouldn't we all, yeah. <laughs> you've got to work at them. But when you do them and you get better at them, that you go, hey... You become automatic. Okay, okay. There we go. Some great advice there for you, Sally. Good luck with your career as well in music. Who's up next, please, Colin? Next, we've got Siobhan from Nottinghamshire on line three. Morning, Siobhan. Hi. Hi there. What's up with you? Um, right. Um, I'd like to get my confidence back to deal with uh, my nephew. Right. Um, he's been in care for the last six years. Right. Um, how, old, how old is he now? He's uh, nearly 17. Okay. Um, I mean, I was a primary parent, uh, you know, when he was 12 and younger. Mm -hmm. Um, but now, I've come back on the scene over the last six months, he doesn't listen to anything I say, he's very nasty to me, and I just find myself walking out now, and he's learning how to manipulate that. Okay, so you I'm, sound I'm, like you've got your hands full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Siobhan, I think this is slightly a complex issue, because you have a history of separation here. Mm -hmm. And when you've got a history of separation, and a young person comes back, they're furious. They are so mad, and he's taking it out on you. Okay? Now, the thing is, that therefore means that I think what you need to do is you need to 
first of all, recognize he's desperately unhappy, he's extremely angry, and he probably doesn't even understand the feelings that he's got. So he needs to make sure that he has the help that he needs. So some counseling help, some support, etc. You need to be able to sit down with him and for yourself to realize that, you know, you can only do your best in life. Okay, sit down, have a chat with him, and have a very honest chat where you say something to him along the lines of, look, you're not happy, I'm not happy, I love you, I want this to be right, whatever's happened before, can we try and work it out? But you have to keep your sense of being the adult in this. Okay. That's what I'm having a problem with. Right. He well, just turns his back and stalks, and then he, he, that's it. He's just and he hooks in. Into... him out. And he's just shutting me straight down. It's the manipulation yeah. you it's said earlier. It's the earlier, manipulation. You know. So what he's doing is he's hooking into you. So one of the things you need to do is you need to keep your adult position. He's hooking into you like he's, he's, he's manipulating you like you're also a child in this. And it's two kids who are getting caught up like that. Mm, so that's what it feels at the moment. Exactly. Uh, to get that, um, that, um, that adult bit back? Yes. Yeah. Okay. One of the things is hold your ground, do some deep breathing, so don't move. Do not walk out that room because when you do, you are, you are actually saying you've won. Okay, right. so you stay there, you do that deep breathing, and you keep saying in your head, okay, you keep saying in your head something like, look, I'm the adult here, he's just an unhappy kid, mm. but I'm the adult, I can hold That's this I together. I'm scared to open my mouth because I don't want him to actually view me as the same as the rest of the family who have turned their back right. on him. But he's also testing you because oh, no. because when when someone's had that happen, he's waiting for you to go. Exactly, because that's so, so many people have let him down in the past. He assumes everyone's going to do that. So what you need to do is you need can tell him. You can say to him, "Look, love, that you, yeah, you are hard to be with. You know, this is really difficult for me, but I'm not leaving you." Okay. Now you can be. Yeah. An, and you've got to keep telling him that, and you've got to keep telling him that. But sit in that chair and do not move, because when you do, then it A, terrifies him, because he thinks you really are okay. going, and B, he wins. There we go. Good luck to you, Siobhan. Uh, there's a lady who's waiting. We haven't got time to put her through. Very briefly, though, she suffered a lack of confidence in groups. She's in her 40s, yeah. doesn't like being in groups. Any advice? Yeah. You, what you do then is, what I would need to, to talk to her about is, when you're going into a group again, um, try what we call desensitization. So first of all, don't try going into a really, really big group. Go first of all to a very small group, try a couple of people, get comfortable talking to them, then you increase it three, four, five, until eventually you can get in and do so it. So it's taking it slowly taking by it stages. Slowly. There really is a solution for everything, isn't there? Extraordinary. Um, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. Glodina, thank you for all of that. And thank you too to everyone who phoned in, by the way, apart from our first caller. You didn't, didn't like you at all. Now, if you didn't get through and you'd still like to talk to someone, you could try Childline. They're on 0800 1111 or check out our website.